guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and this is a very exciting, very special tonight on a very special episode of Serial at Midnight. Guys, this is a crossover video with the Films at Home YouTube channel. Films at Home is a great resource for physical media coverage. And in my opinion, Films at Home has the best video that I have seen on the internet about why older movies look better in 4K. It's a really a champion of um, uh, the, the whole Films at Home channel. is kind of a champion for the 4K format. And he really breaks down, Jeff really breaks down how uh, the, the science, science behind how older movies, you know, he gets into like, scan lines, resolutions, all that stuff. It's kind of hard to argue with the fact. Um, and so uh, this is, Jeff and I were kind of talking behind the scenes about like, what could we do to collaborate, to collaborate on a video? So many hand gestures already in this video. Uh, and we kind of landed upon the idea of each choosing five movies that we kind of can't believe still are not on Blu-ray. I think most of them have had DVD releases, but when you get into, like, guys, we're over a decade into the Blu-ray format. Can you believe it? It's been over 10 years, uh, and we still have so many movies that are not represented on Blu-ray. So this is half of the conversation. This is Captain Tiki and I came up with this list, our top five. I say top five. There's not really any number or order here, but uh, these are the these are these are my my top five here. Uh, and then for the other half of this conversation, I'm going to reference you over to Jeff's channel, Films at Home, at the end of this video. Stick around; you got you got to see the list. Um, but with all that out of the way, let's just dive right into uh, our five choices. And I'm going to kick things off with Sam Peck and Paws, Pat Garrett, and Billy the Kid. This is a 1973 western. It stars James Coburn as Pat Garrett. It stars Chris Christopherson as Billy the Kid. You guys know I love Chris Christopherson. And uh, he was, it was an interesting choice at the time because he was like 36 years old, I believe, when uh, when this movie came out. But Christopherson is the man. And Coburn, look, come on, that's classic, right? And Peckinpah is, of course, one of the uh, greatest Western directors for sure. You know, he made so many classic Westerns and uh, really captured like the, the idea of like mourning that time that had come and gone. You put that in the context of the 70s, the movements that were coming to a close in the 70s, uh, the death of, a, of an idealist society, a lot of stuff, a lot of subtext in these movies. But here's the thing. There are a lot of things working against Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. Uh, not the least of which is that Peckinpah was deeply, he, he was deep in the stages of alcoholism. I think Coburn has said uh, he was good for, not Coburn, but that Peckinpah was good for about four hours a day. That's not great. Um, but, and when he turned in his cut, the studio was like, we can't release this. So they like further cut it, really brought the running time down. I think that their, the studio version was like an hour and 35 minutes or something like that, like really cut the absolute life out of the movie. Uh, and so we have no real definitive version of Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. We have maybe Peck and Paw's version, but even that's kind of contentious because uh, there's rumors that uh, like the, the editor was sneaking out footage of alternate takes so that they could like cobble together their own version. So that's not ideal. And then the original, uh, the, the studio version of the movie, like no one, that was panned, you know? Uh, so we have no definitive version, but the like the DVD version presents two different cuts, which is a great service because you get to choose, well, this is this version, this is this version. Uh, the truth probably somewhere in between you know, the best version of that movie. But uh, it's a really interesting movie. That's how we would have to have a Blu-ray, I think, if we could get this on a, on in a Blu-ray format, is we would have to have, like, these different cuts so we could kind of decide for ourselves. But that's no problem, right? We get... Uh, how many versions of Waterworld do we have on Blu-ray now? Three? So it's easily achieved. Uh, by the way, I should also mention that uh, this is the movie where the song Knocking on Heaven's Door comes from. It's got Bob Dylan in the movie. Bob Dylan wrote that song for Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid. No children. <laughs> Guns and Roses did not write Knocking on Heaven's Door. That song goes back to the 70s for this movie. Uh, just a very interesting story, a very interesting piece of cinema history that I don't feel like has uh, been brought with us along in the high definition era. So hopefully soon. Uh, moving on from there, I would like to talk about 1982's Night Shift. Uh, this is, um, listen, it's Ron Howard directing, you know, Opie, <laughs> future director of 
Willow, uh, Solo, A Star Wars Story, Backdrop. Am I just going to get into Ron Howard's IMDb page now? No, I will not do that. But uh, Ron Howard, I think a fantastic director. Oscar-winning director, right? A Beautiful Mind got an Oscar, did it not? Uh, the point is, this is a movie that's directed by Ron Howard. It stars Michael Keaton, who I think everybody loves, uh, and Henry Winkler, a hey, the Fonz himself. And... <laughs> When, when I was making this list, I was like, why aren't these movies on Blu-ray? And then I was looking at my list and I was like, oh, I think I see a theme here. Uh, some of these movies have some very controversial uh, subject matter or representations in them. Shelley Long is also in this movie. I, I cannot forget the great Shelley Long cheers, of course. Uh, but the, the premise of this movie is that <laughs> Michael Keaton kind of talks Henry Winkler into running a more... Uh, Nope. Talks Henry Winkler into running a bordello, a house of ill repute, ladies of the night, out of the morgue in which Henry Winkler works. So a bordello in a morgue. Why is this not on Blu-ray? I don't understand, guys. I don't understand, guys. Um, so I understand maybe with our cancel culture being what it is and with everyone's fingers hovering just aboard the, above the keyboard waiting to you know, funnel their outrage into the internet. Um, maybe that's why I'm not sure, but this is a movie like everybody seems to everyone who's seen this movie really seems to enjoy it. There was an old DVD that I think I don't remember exactly what the issue with the DVD was. I think maybe it's either full frame or it was one of those that you had to flip over. It's long since been reissued in a more modern, better encoded version. Uh, but we still don't have a Blu-ray and that kind of blows my mind because we're talking about a level talent here. Michael Keaton's still on top. Uh, Henry Winkler, everybody loves Henry Winkler, and then Ron Howard, you know, like America's director. <laughs> so uh, I have hopes that one of these days we will finally get Night Shift on Blu-ray. Moving on from there, I want to talk about an oldie but a goodie, and this might be like a deep cut for some of you guys, but I'm talking about 1939's Gunga Din. Uh, some of you guys are like, Gunga Din, what is he talking about? Well, it's a 1939 movie with Cary Grant, the great Cary Grant, Hitchcock actor. Um, Cary Grant's, of course, one of the most famous leading men of all time. He was the Tom Hanks of multiple decades, uh, probably one of the most bankable, viable actors of all time. And uh, in the 30s, in, in the at the tail end of the 30s, he was in this movie called Gunga Din. It takes place in India. It's an adventure movie. And it has a lot of different elements in it. And it's kind of wacky when you go back and watch it now. But it was... Um it's guys, if you've seen Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, uh, Spielberg and George Lucas drew so much of the Temple of Doom from Gunga Din. Uh, and it, they, of course, Star Wars did this. You know, both the Star Wars franchises and the Indiana Jones franchises did not really invent anything that they were doing. They channeled the movies of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, the serials, Flash Gordon, stuff like that. But Gunga Din is all over uh, Temple of Doom and to the point that there, the the plot of Gunga Din is there's this cult, the thuggy cult, you know, Temple of Doom, who are trying to, uh, the, you know, they're kind of been wiped out, kind of been pushed to the fringes. But they're this cult in India who was growing, they're resurging, and they must be stopped because they're going to, uh, you know, bad things come with the thuggy. And if you've seen the Temple of Doom, you know all the all the crazy stuff that happens with the thuggy in that movie. A lot of that stuff has its roots in Gunga Den. It's Cary Grant, you guys. I mean, it's 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 a bankable movie. A lot of people love this movie. It's one of those great '30s action adventure movies. Uh, takes place, you know, exotic locales. But as I'm talking about it, I think I'm hearing why maybe it's not on Blu-ray because it's got uh, people who are not of Indian descent playing Indians. That's problematic, especially in our modern culture. Uh, it also has um, the marginalization of an entire <laughs> group of people. So if you haven't seen Gunga Den, there are multiple DVD copies. It's shown up and shown up in so many different packages, uh, repackages, box sets, things like that. I think I have it on a Cary Grant four pack from Turner Classic Movies, but uh, uh, it's a fun movie. All right, we've got two left. I want to talk about the, from 2000, the year 2000, Wonder Boys. You guys, I love the movie Wonder Boys, directed by Curtis Hansen, between LA Confidential, which everybody loves, and 8 Mile, which a lot of people like, I think. Uh, in between those, he made Wonder Boys, which I don't know if it, I guess it was not maybe a commercial success. I don't know. But Michael Douglas is this writer who is having, he's written a great novel and he's struggling with the follow up. He's kind of having a midlife crisis. It's, it's Michael Douglas in the, you know, circa the year 2000. So, uh, 
I guess he would have been, uh, you know, 50, you know, around, around there. Uh, but, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is in the movie. Tobey Maguire is in the movie. Francis McDormand from Fargo is in the movie. And it's great. It feels like, like at the time in 2000, we kind of talked about it like, oh, it feels like a Coen Brothers movie. Francis McDormand, of course, probably helped that, but it's got this real, um, it's, it's poignant. Like it has, it's, it's a serious movie, but it has these bits of humor, like laugh out loud humor at some parts of it. It's just a really well constructed movie. Katie Holmes, I forgot to mention Katie Holmes is also in this movie. Uh, but it's fantastic. It's a really fantastic movie. Bob Dylan again does a song for this movie. Uh, Things have changed. If you if you're familiar with the song, things have changed. Dylan wrote that for this movie. Uh, Curtis Hansen directed that music video for Bob Dylan. Uh, I'm just realizing that is is Bob Dylan in my number one? No, he is not, as far as I know. Uh, but um, I love Wonder Boys. The DVD version is what we have to settle for. It is on DVD. If you haven't seen the movie, please track it down. Uh, recently, I talked about Robert Downey Jr. in the context of one of our videos. I said I love his Marvel work, of course, but he was a viable, bankable actor well before his Marvel career, and I, I recommended Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's I've gotten feedback from several people who have tracked down Kiss Kiss Bang Bang and been like, wow, that was a really good movie. Uh, if you enjoyed Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, you want to see more RDJ outside of uh, Marvel, track down Wonder Boys. It's a really fantastic movie, and it, I, I don't understand why this movie is not on Blu-ray. This is, more than any other, this seems like... Um, it, it, it seems like a home run because it was it's got highly recognizable actors in it solid performances Bob Dylan that Bob Dylan song which I want to say was nominated or maybe even won an Academy Award like that song was a really big deal this movie has prestige attached to it and like I said from the director of LA Confidential and 8 Mile what the heck what's going on guys let's get let's get Wonder Boys on Blu-ray last but definitely not least uh, this, whenever someone asks me, we get comments on the channel all the time, like, what movie would you like to see released on Blu-ray? This is my number one answer. It is 1980, hold on, let me check the year, double check. Okay, I just want to double check. 1982's The Sword and the Sorcerer. This is Albert Piyun's first movie, the director of Cyborg uh, with Jean, Jean-Claude Van Damme. The Nemesis series, I don't even remember how many of those, there, there's at least four or five of them. He directed... The Nemesis series, uh, he has a very interesting, very distinct style, and uh, the Sword and Sorcerer is his first movie, and it's a as you, it's a sword and sorcery movie. It's it's like Conan. It was chasing that Conan the Barbarian thing. As so many movies of the early 80s did, A Tour, The Fighting Eagle, uh, Beastmaster is chasing Conan. So many movies of that time chasing Conan the the Bob. Cram! I have never prayed to you before. I'm not going to do it. That wasn't even very good. Um, <laughs> okay. Do I stop the video and start over because of that terrible Schwarzenegger impression? No, we will press forward. Uh, the movie stars Lee Horsley, who I think has maybe all but vanished at this point in the game, but uh, for a while was a genuine uh, star. Matt Houston on TV. But anyway, Lee Horsley, sword and sorcery movie. Richard Mall, Bull from uh, from Night Court is the bad guy, buried under a lot of makeup and stuff, masks, prosthetics. And this is a movie that I think a lot of like. It's I'm not saying like oh it's an amazing movie. It's not an amazing movie. It's it's fun. It's it is a sword and sorcery movie from 1982 from the director of Cyborg. So that tells you what it is. But. I had this DVD way back in the day. I remember I was in Kmart, like in 2001 or something like that. And the DVD was like 10 or 12 bucks. I was like, yeah, I'll grab this. I picked it up, watched the movie, enjoyed it. And then for some reason, I don't know if times were tough, you know, for, for a younger Heath, uh, but I traded it. I sold it away thinking, of course, I could just grab it again because it was a budget title, right? Like it wasn't this high prestige title. Little did I know that that movie was never going to see another pressing for the next 20 years. And so here we are, Two decades later, that movie does not exist on Blu-ray. I don't think that movie exists on DVD. It is one of the most sought-after cult titles that I can think of. And I don't know why. I don't know what the holdup is. I don't know if there's rights holding it up. If the person who has the, the title, the rights for this movie, if they're just sitting on them and they want an exorbitant amount of money, I don't know. But uh, anytime someone asks me, you guys, The Sword and the Sorcerer, Albert Piyun's first movie, 
why is this movie not on Blu-ray? I want it so bad. Hopefully, this video can raise some awareness of uh, these movies that aren't on Blu-ray and maybe get some some uh, get the ball rolling, get some get the get the gland the the salivation <laughs> flowing for some of these titles. Okay, so that's our top five. I'm gonna reference you over to Films at Home. I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video. I'm gonna put a pop up at the end of this video as well on the screen here, so you can just click over to Films at Home. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and talking about my five movies that I wish were on Blu-ray. What are your five movies that you wish were on Blu-ray? You know, you don't even have to limit it to five. What movies are not on Blu-ray that you wish were? Uh, I know there's a lot of answers out there. There's a lot of stuff that's still not represented. We live in a golden age of physical media, but uh, it's so interesting because there's so much more room for growth. And as the as the market continues to change and adapt, and and these uh, retailer these distributors really start to continue to serve the the niche collector market, maybe we'll see some of these things again. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Films and home, I appreciate you. Guys, thanks. Take care, and until next time, I will catch you later.